All right, today we're going to be uh, getting ready for the chicken wing dissection. So those of you that are at home, if your parents are able to get you a chicken wing, then uh, you can do this lab tomorrow. If they're not able to get any chicken wings, you can come by the school and I can give you a chicken wing or you can just watch the video that I make tomorrow and actually answer the questions on in the packet from the dissection that you watch that we do in class. The reason we do the chicken wing dissection is because it shows us how the human arm works and because we have very similar uh, bone structure and muscle structures in our arms and in the wing of a chicken. So at the top we have this big bone up here, this long bone called the humerus. And I remember because it's not very funny if I hit my humerus and it hits that nerve right there. The funny bone or humerus bone. Down at the bottom in the forearm we have two bones. One at the top that's called the radius and I remember that because I can radiate or rotate my Thumb, and that reminds me that this is the radius. Down here we have the ulna. The ulna begins with the letter U and then the pinky is P, so up, pinky. And I know it's on the bottom side, but it spells a word. So that's how I remember it, ulna, pinky. And so this bends at the elbow right here and it's a hinge joint where it bends. And then we have phalanges we have a thumb so we're gonna go on up and look at the muscles now that are here so in the front we have the bicep muscle on the top right here so whenever we need to lift something this contracts and gets bigger and so it gets fatter but it doesn't get longer it gets shorter so it contracts the bicep but it extends or lengthens the tricep under here then when I put my arm down it lengthens the bicep and contracts, gets shorter, the uh, tricep here. The chicken also has both of those uh, muscles. So kind of if you think of this part right here, so here's the humerus and the bicep, tricep. Here's the forearm with the two bones, the radius and the ulna, and here's the hand. And yes, the chicken wing even has a thumb on it and this would be the hand section right here so we have the radius the ulna the humerus the elbow and up here would be the shoulder joint so it's very similar to ours so tomorrow when we look at this it's going to have um, the chicken the skin on it and that's part of the integumentary system but remember that um, humans is made of hair, skin, and nails. Our integumentary system is hair, skin, and nails, and it's for our protection and to help keep us warm. Well, chickens have the same thing. They have the skin, and they actually have a nail. They have nail on their uh, thumb right here, so you might see it right there, but they don't have hair. They have what? They have feathers. So when we start the lab, we're gonna start off by removing the integumentary system, the skin off the outside, which is very bumpy, and it has a little pores where the feathers come out. We're gonna remove the skin down to, until it comes to the muscle part here, so that we can see the underneath tissue. That reason it was hard to get off is because there's connective tissue there that connects them together and keeps everything in place. Underneath the skin, we might actually see chunks of fat, like here's a little chunk of fat right here, there's a little bit right there, and it's gonna be a yellowish tissue. Um, then the actual meat that we eat is called the muscles, and so when we think about eating a steak, we're eating a skeletal muscle. If we're eating chicken breast, we're eating a skeletal muscle. When we're eating a wing, we're eating the skeletal muscles. The only time you wouldn't eat a skeletal muscle, you would eat a smooth muscle, might be if you were eating uh, chicken, you might be eating menudo, which is some of the stomach muscle, which is a smooth muscle, or maybe chitlins, which is the intestines that we looked at the other day when they fry those, that's a smooth muscle. Or if you've ever eaten chicken hearts, that would be cardiac muscle. So going on down, we have muscles that are gonna be this pinkish tissue, and then tendons are at the end of, 
there's gonna be these white silvery bands called tendons, and they're attaching the muscle to the bone and gonna actually cause the movement. So we'll demonstrate that during the dissection tomorrow. At the joints, all of our bones are held together by these little clear bands that are gonna be called ligaments. That bone to bone is a ligament and they're clear bands that are gonna go across there. Anywhere that bones meet, two or more bones come together, that's called a joint. And so movement can happen at those joints there. So as you dissect, you're gonna to come to another part, the cartilage that's at the end of the bones. And this is kind of like a bumper pad, a rubbery bumper pad that's at the end. You may have eaten a chicken drumstick and that cap piece comes off when you take a bite of it. And that rubbery piece that's underneath there is the actual um, cartilage. So that's a really unique piece that's on the end of every bone to keep them from hitting together because we have living tissue. This bone and this bone are both alive and they have nerves that go over them. So when you have two bones that are racking against each other, it's very painful and arthritis forms. So the cartilage is what keeps that pounding from happening on them. Older people a lot of times will have to get a knee replacement because their cartilage is either worn out or it was damaged and had to be removed through surgery. So as you watch the dissection or as you do the dissection with the video tomorrow, you wanna be able to put down the color or the description of the, the uh, tissue. What did that tissue attach to? What did I have to separate it from? What did we separate it from? And it might be a good thing that you just do the dissection and then fill this in afterwards because your hands are gonna get sticky and kind of uh, messy and it, you wouldn't wanna get that on your computer or on a piece of paper. Um, then you're gonna look at the fat. What color was it? That yellowy, uh, lumpy stuff underneath the skin and what was it attached to? The muscles. And so you go through each one of these and finding out what each thing was attached to and what we had to separate it from. Now, um, going on down here, analysis. Um, and in this part, what purpose does the connective tissue serve? It keeps everything together. It's binding everything together. And what tissue actually moves the chicken wing? So as we do the dissection tomorrow, I'm gonna to demonstrate something here. And I want you to see if you can figure out what actually caused the movement. This next line says, what are ten why are tendons important to muscles ability to make the body move? What do tendons connect together? What are the two things that it connects together? And then how does it make it move? And then what tissue of the chicken wing is commonly referred to as the meat and the part that we eat? So think about that. Now, this is the next little demonstration here where you're going to take something that's kind of heavy in your arm. I'm gonna just demonstrate with this bottle here. It's not very heavy, but I'm gonna pretend. And so it says, take it in your left hand and then take and lift it and hold it at your side. You're gonna hold it at your side, then you're gonna place your right hand on your upper left arm so that you can feel your muscles move. So when I felt that, what happened to this bicep? It actually got shorter. So this got shorter. What happened to the tricep? It got longer. So the first question says, what joint did you use to lift the weight? What's this joint here called? I mentioned it earlier. Explain which muscle contracted, got shorter, and which muscle extended as you raise the weight. Then explain what happened when to each muscle as you lowered the weight. So when I went down, what happened to the bicep and what happened to the length of the tricep? Which bones in the arm moved? Okay, so I'm looking at it. What were the name of these two bones? Because those are the ones that actually moved. Which bone or bones in the arm did not move? And finally, 
you need to um, kind of define or tell what each of the roles of this is. The brain, what's its job? Tendon, what's its function? Muscles, bones, and joints, what are their functions? And then you're gonna talk about, in a paragraph, maybe four or five sentences, how all five of those parts play a part in actual movement. So, somebody knocks on your door. What happened? First, you heard a sound. That sound went to where? What did it cause your body to do? What did you do? What was in control of those skeletal muscles? So, talking about how the movement takes place, and you're gonna put that into a um, paragraph there. So tomorrow we're going to actually do the dissection and I want you to then follow along with the dissection. If you want to do the dissection with us, do that and then come back and finish up this packet once you're done.